I'm Pat Ray, Pioneer Field Agronomist, ready to share some observations with you from soybean fields here in East Central Illinois. Finding data on soybeans has certainly moved up here in East Central Illinois over the last decade, and for good reason. In Pioneer on-farm trials from 2013 to 2018, we've seen that the ideal planting date is in that April time frame, usually around April 21st to the 30th. If you look at this study here over this five-year period, you'll notice that the highest frequency of plots that exceeded 100 bushel per acre were in that April 21st to 30th time frame. This is data from Ryan Van Roco put together and really summarized nice here to show that early soybean planting advantage. Now the risks that we face when we plant early is frost or freeze injury. And you can see in this area outlined in red here where I support Pioneer sales reps and customers that purchase Pioneer seed. We definitely dipped down into some pretty low temperatures. I would say we got down to about 28 degrees for a couple hours in some of this area. As I went around and looked at fields over the last week, I noticed that there were three key things that really influenced the amount of freeze injury that we saw. Number one was planting date or crop stage. Number two was the elevation within the field. And then number three was the amount of residue or whether or not there was tillage done in the field. Let's walk through those real quick. First of all, planting date. Most of the fields that had injury on them were planted between April 1st and April 10th. They were in that VE to VC crop stage, and you can see some of the injury there on the right-hand side in that top picture, for example. That plant right there is just starting to emerge, and you can see the cotyledons are, are really injured. And then down here, these soybeans were, were planted earlier, a little further along, and, uh, and definitely are not gonna make it at this point already. When we look at elevation, we can get as supplied data and we can extract out elevation from that layer, which is what I did in this slide. And as we go from the east side of this field, which is low line, and go west, you can see this is high ground over here in the green, low ground over here in the red. In the low line area, you can see just how much injury there is to those plants. Those most likely are definitely gone already. Whereas on the same day, when we look at the high ground, yeah, the cotyledons got a little bit of damage on them, but those plants are continuing to grow and will probably make it and be viable. Third thing I wanna point out is the differences in residue. And this is a great example. This is a granular insight satellite imagery. And you can see from this bird's eye view, we've got something going on out in the field and it's real simple. On the east side of this field, it was corn in 2019. This used to be a field by itself. This year, this, this whole chunk of ground is gonna be one field. And on the west side, it was prevent plant in 2019. So there's no crop residue there. Let's take a look from the ground. So I'm standing right here on the split. Here you can see that prevent plant over on the west side of the field. No residue there. And as we look back to the east, you can see all that crop residue from the corn from last year. What that do to the crop itself in 2020 here on the soybeans? Well, again, on the left, we've got the prevent plant area with soybeans looking for the most part pretty healthy. They could certainly use a drink of water and we just got that, so we should progress there. On the east side of the field though, where we've got a lot more residue from last year, those beans definitely got a lot more injured. You can find a few plants there that are gonna survive. Looks like one right there, but for the most part, those plants are all gone. Now this is a no-till field here, and you can see on the left picture, where these soybeans had no residue, the ground warmed up, a little bit faster. These plants emerged a little quicker, but unfortunately with the freezing temperatures, they got frozen and they're gone. Here on the right, where we've got a lot more residue, those plants didn't emerge as quick and they did not get frozen then as a result. 
You can see they've been growing since and continuing to progress. So when we look at freeze injury and the options that we have, number one, we can, we can do nothing if you have an acceptable stand. You could spike in some additional plants, either a fixed rate or maybe a variable rate based on elevation, putting a higher population in on that low-lying ground where we've lost a few more plants and, and dropping the population down on the high ground. Or we could just tear up areas or completely replace the entire field with replant. It really depends on what you're finding out there. In summary, those early planted soybeans can offer big reward, but the risk of freeze injury should be considered in how early you go out and plant. If freeze injury occurs, be sure to evaluate injury across the field before making any replant decisions. And, and not just stepping in on the edge of the field, but really getting across the field on different elevations and, and doing some good stand counts to see where you're at. You can conduct an additional, initial evaluation shortly after a freeze um, to determine if replant's warranted, but you really should wait five to seven days to make that determination. On this example on the left here, that's kind of a no-brainer if all your plants are looking like that. It's time to start over. On the right here though, we've got a plant that uh, is probably going to survive there. This one's gone. This one's got potential. It's one of those wait and see situations to determine whether or not it's going to make it. Once we give it five to seven days, then we can decide. Lastly right here, I brought some plants home with me. I've had them sitting outside the last couple days. And you can see here that in my first sample, I've only got one plant out of all those plants. There's about eight plants. There's only one plant that, that survived. Some of these look like they maybe had a little bit of potential, but they definitely are not going to make it. This one's put on some nice growth. Uh, since I brought it home, the unifoliates have unfolded, and, and uh, this plant's going to continue to grow. Over here on the right, a lot better luck with this sample. Um, you can see there's, again, about eight, maybe nine plants in there, and, uh, and two-thirds of those plants are going to make it. We've just got like three of them there that, that aren't going to survive. So, again, extremely important to wait and see. I know a lot of times we just want to get things done while the weather's good, but in some cases you can, you can make that call if, uh, if the plants are totally gone. But if you've got plants that are on the fence, maybe still plants to, to yet emerge because we've been pretty cold here this season, you're better off waiting and seeing to see uh, what we're going to have for a stand there and then make that determination. I want to thank you for tuning in. Hope you got some good information out of this video. And uh, for, all my, for all the Pioneer customers out there, we really appreciate your business. Thank you and have a great day. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.